Hi, I'm Josh Cook. I attended Eastbrook Academy from K-5 through 12th grade and graduated in 2012. I had the privilege to interview four alumni who are great friends and family about their time at Eastbrook Academy and how the school shaped their journey into college and beyond. Their stories are raw, authentic, and completely in the moment. So I remember freshman year, I was, I, I was nervous. I didn't think that I not necessarily couldn't do it, but there are other life circumstances where I was trying to navigate what that meant for me. And I didn't feel like I had the space to necessarily speak about what was going on. And because of that, I did have a fear of speaking out. And I remember the first year was our philosophy class and we had to do a public presentation at the end. And I remember just having, I won't say an anxiety attack, but I definitely freaked out in my seat. I got teary eyed. I'm like, please do not let me cry in front of everyone right now because that is embarrassing. But having teachers like um, Mrs. Malcolm was another one, Mrs. Huggard, they reminded you are more than capable of what you put your mind to. And they would instruct you and guide you with concern and care. There was a Spanish teacher who used to work there, Mrs. Rucker. And there was one uh, lunch session where a lot of the young girls and I were in there and we're just talking about what it means to navigate and some of the issues that we have as women. Even if, even if I didn't share anything, being able to listen and hear what other girls or classmates would say at the time were discussing, allowed me to see that, okay, I'm not in this alone. Or me personally, that allowed me to have the space I needed to actually process those things. Um, had I been in a bigger environment, who knows if I would have been able to process that more, more um, than I had at Eastbrook. Because of Eastbrook's like small class size, I, I really was able to develop like really strong relationships with like all of my teachers. And while that <laughs> was like um, hard sometimes because you could never really get away with a lot of stuff, like, cause my parents knew all my teachers. Um, it was also really awesome though, because they all like really believed in me. When I was in elementary, I just remember like um, Mrs. Uh, Wood and like Mrs. Gruber were very influential about like, just like always encouraging us and like, it, I don't know, just that positive reinforcement. And then in middle school, I like, I was diagnosed with this like vision problem and it made it really hard to do like a lot of homework and a lot of studies, especially math. So I remember like in seventh grade, Mrs. Horn, our math teacher was very like, she took time to like tutor me before and after school. And like, when I would get better at the test, she always was like, it was like this huge party and this huge affirmation thing. I think the academy set me up to know what kind of learning works for me. Like if I would have went to a big college for me personally, I would have just like not done very well, but being at a small Christian college, I could invest in that community, but also my professors invested in me too. At college, I had the, I had the same experience as when I was at Eastbrook. I still am really close to like my band and choir director from college. And I'm really close to um, like my, my professors in my major that I studied there, um, which I did, I didn't think like going into college, I was like, oh, I'll learn from these people and I'll be grateful for them. But like, I mean, I talked to them a couple of times a year and I think it was, it was because of like, I had that relationship with a lot of teachers from the academy. Like, I, I really think it comes back down to, to confidence and to also like believing in myself, like academically, yes, they, they prepared me for college as well. Um, but I think it's more like important than that. I think that the academy and also the church too taught me that like I'm important, <laughs> like I'm an important enough person to invest in. So when I went to college, I felt like I, I already had that because of my upbringing, uh, upbringing being at the academy and these teachers um, believing in me. Um, because I didn't really believe in myself for a while. So I remember coming back in third grade. This is going to be my first ever experience in an American school in America. And I just remember thinking, am I going to fit in? Am I going to have any friends? Like, this is so weird to me. Like, and third grade, Mrs. Gruber's class. Um, and I've never felt so welcomed 
And I remember walking into the classroom nervous and kind of a wreck and my classmates were so nice, um, so accepting. And I don't even remember, like, it was, it was probably the same day, same week where I was like, oh, like I have friends here already. Like I have, I have good friends here. Third, fourth, through fifth grade. We always were at the flagpole in the beginning for assembly. And we prayed together. We prayed for our teachers. We prayed for our nations. We prayed for each other. And we started class. And just having that time set to, you know, honor Christ and honor each other, I think that really set the tone for the day. I think that, you know, instills confidence, not in just yourself, but in Christ. And then that flows out through you. I, I look back on third grade and I love third grade. Like, I, I just loved third grade because it was so much fun. I remember Victor in front of me, Jackson behind me, and us sharing snacks during lunchtime and swinging on the monkey bars and um, Betsy and Allie. And this is what a friendship looks like. This is what, um, you know, teachers are supposed to be like. And this is what a community should look like you know, having something so good, you kind of compare every situation that you're in afterwards to this amazing situation. And even being a mom myself now and looking at schools for my daughter and you, you know, every mom, every parent wants the best for their kid. And just coming back to Eastbrook, it's just like, yes, like that's a no brainer. Like, yes, I, I want that same experience for my daughter. I want that same experience for other kids. And I think that's why um, a lot of people look at Eastbrook. Um, you know, even kids who came in in high school noticed a difference. And by the end, they're like, okay, this is what, this is what friendship should be like. This is what um, a classroom should be like. This is what a community should be like. You know, any kid kind of worries, you know, am I, am I going to fit in? am I going to have those relationships? And, you know, that's, that's one of the most amazing things about Eastbrook is that they really cultivate a atmosphere where deep relationships can grow. You want your kid to be a cool guy like me? <laughs> you send him on over here to Eastbrook. <laughs> when I was writing my senior thesis and was coming up with a topic, even before, because like everyone was dreading it, but I kind of was like, thinking like, ah, I kind of, it'll be fun to like write a giant paper. Like that's an interesting idea. I remember when I brought up anime and being like, could I write on anime? Surprisingly, teachers were like, yeah, if you like do a good job. And write. I was not shouted down for my passions. I was not like condemned to like, how dare you write about those Japanese cartoons in this academic school. It was like, teachers are encouraging me to pursue a topic that I found passionate in. And that I had a desire to learn and understand more. When we did our, um, it wasn't a theology course, but we like looked at different religions basically um, for one semester. And I remember that was kind of the probing conversations that got me thinking like, is missions what I would want to do? Because I have this genuine, I've always had this like genuine desire to like go out and go into the world and explore things. I remember talking with Mr. Brian about possibly doing YWAM and him being like yeah let's go that's all you yeah. I remember him being very open to having that discussion with me about specifically YWAM or youth with the mission ministry because that was what he did that mindset of like no matter where which you know where we came from that we were able to I think like all of us wanted to subconsciously understand each other's perspectives and understand each other's point of view but diversity really is like a ginormous pin on the board of my life of saying like me to look back on and point to and be like so many so many formations of how I think how I pray how I interact with people like comes from comes from like this this group of people that I form such a close bond with God's goal for the kingdom is diversity you know like every tribe every tongue every nation every people like that his his dream vision goal for the end of the world is for every single people group to come together and I think like having that oh I'm getting like emotional a little bit here <laughs> I didn't want to cry for a portion of our lives we got to just have one of the most 
beautiful experiences of diversity we could have that that just made us I think as adults and I know we talk about this like it's so important for us to understand perspectives and where people come from but ultimately like we are called to love every people that was so prevalent from just the diversity that was at Eastbrook and I can't I would never trade that for anything.